Apologies for the poor video quality. Explicit language used. Thank you for watching. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sub Talk Radio. In true Sub Talk fashion, we are taking you back to the roots, introducing you to new and upcoming brands that need to be on your radar. I was so honored and I guess pleasured to meet my guest tonight at the Arnold a few months ago. Actually, a few months ago now. It's hard to believe. Um, but allow, allow me to introduce Zach of ZimFit. Zach, good to finally see you again. Hey, what's up, Sean? You, you know, it's it's kind of a shame, man. My PR guy told me this was a podcast with Joe Rogan, but I mean, I guess, I guess this will work. <laughs> <laughs> I've got just a couple of less followings than him, but I'm, I'm on the heels here. I'm on the heels. Um, yeah, you, you know, hey, this this works. So Arnold, was it was was it your first time being there, or have you been to the Arnold prior to exhibiting? Um, first time, man. First time being there. Uh, always wanted to go uh, okay. as, when I was younger, but I never thought I'd actually be going and setting up as a vendor. So it was uh, it was a really special moment for me. Uh, just kind of sitting back, seeing everything come together, um, seeing all my guys and uh, just all the believers in the brand, um, all the energy. You, know, yep. you were there too. So I, I mean, that energy, man, the energy at the Arnold is unlike anything else. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. Did you, did you expect it? I mean, we, what were you expecting? Were you surprised? Were you kind of, I mean, what were the emotions when you're there and now they, now they'll say Saturday where the place is just jam packed. I wish it would have been longer. Like it was just so okay. much fun. I, I would have stayed a couple more days. Um, we do a lot of events, obviously nothing like the Arnold. So yep. I was kind of setting expectations for it to be, uh, a, a lot of people, a couple hundred thousand people. Um, I got luckily a bunch of great guys backing me. I have Haley backing me. Um, that's my girl. Um, yep. Just all the support. Uh, I think as a, a smaller brand, I think we killed the Arnold. I think it was a good time. Yeah, I, that was my fourth time there, and it was definitely probably the the biggest I've seen in a while. And I don't know if it was the combination of the stack 3D wing, which I which you were part of, or the animal cage coming back again because they had gone for a couple of years, or just that, you know, let's face it, we, we're kind of officially knock on wood out of COVID. And now people are ready to start traveling and coming out of their, their comfort zone a little bit. Yeah, it was um it was a good turnout. Um from what I heard, it was the biggest turnout we've had in years. Uh, yep. it was it was good. So what, what surprised you, though? I mean, obviously, you had your booth, and you had, you had a good-sized booth. Um, the times I walked by, you always had attendance. You had a hum at your booth, which is which is good. There were some other first-timers there, to be honest, that it was kind of slow for them. Um, so obviously, it says a lot for you, to be honest. There wasn't, there wasn't really a lot of surprises. I, I'm the kind of guy that I have to do everything to make sure I'm prepared for something. Or else I will have a I'll have yep. a mental breakdown. Like it's, it's seriously it's bad. So I I have bad anxiety. So I do everything to counteract that. I got everything into place. Uh, made sure we had a plan for everything, a plan for anything that would go wrong. And um, there there wasn't anything that kind of caught us off guard. It it went very smoothly. Too smooth. And I I know I don't remember if it was a post or when you were connected, and I, I think I think it was me that asked you. I said, "How you doing?" And you said, "Well, I think I'm running on two hours sleep, four four energy drinks, a couple of shots of get <laughs> fucked, and you were just like a walking yep. zombie, but yet you still had your faculties about you." Yeah, um, by Sunday, I definitely was tired. I was I was tired. Um, Sunday, I brought my one mistake I made is I brought way too much product. Uh, okay. I didn't want to be in a place where we didn't have enough product. I didn't want to sell out, not have enough. So we brought a lot of product. Um, yeah. and I purposely set myself up where I didn't have a way to ship it back. So okay. kind of give me that little kick in the ass. That, like, Hey, there's zero fucking excuses. I got to get this product fucking sold. Yeah. So Sunday, man, we were, we were fucking grinding. Uh, we yeah. did better Sunday than we did Friday and Saturday. And that was on very little sleep. Really? Um, it was a sh oh, very little sleep. I didn't sleep worth uh, worth a shit uh, Saturday night just because I was so anxious about the next day. Uh, yep. In a good way, it just just you know, like I can't wait to I can't wait to crush it. So, um, yeah, very little sleep, uh, but 
you know, had a solid, those guys really, uh, I, I can't take all the credit. I could not have done that without the team. Those guys really helped us uh, carry us through the whole weekend. Zach, was that the, probably the toughest thing as a brand owner with the Arnold is how much inventory or is it just as hard to do the backdrop? I mean, is, what was the hardest thing maybe setting up or preparing for the Arnold? Uh, the toughest thing for me, you know, luckily Shane did a fantastic, shout out to Shane with Stack 3D. Friend, that guy, great, guy. great guy. He made it so easy. Uh, backdrops were taken care of. I have a graphic guy. Um, he was able to design all the backdrops. Um, when we got there, everything was already set up. Um, yep. Transporting the product. Uh, we've done a couple pallet shipping before. So um, that was, it was easy getting the product there. The toughest thing for me, Sean, because I'm a very hands-on guy, I, I don't like giving up anything, is kind of having to sit back and more run the business and, and trust in my guys right. to help run the register, make sure yep. we you know, got all the orders out, uh, make sure everything stayed clean. There was one point, and this, uh, this scared me the most, on Sunday, I had to run out to Supzilla, which is a an awesome local store in yep. Columbus. They, they, they have a good market there. Um, but I uh, went out when we got there on Wednesday, uh, shook hands with the guys, met them, and then Sunday went out to deliver the product. So I had to leave the booth completely. And I had okay. to trust those guys to keep, you know, hold the fort up while I was gone. And they killed it. They did an amazing job. That was, that was tough for me. Yeah, I can. I mean, it's your baby. I mean, let's face it, it's your baby. And yes, you want to you want to trust everybody. It's maybe not a lack of trust, but again, you're you sound like you're a little bit like me. You're a control freak, not like the negative side, but you just just like the control and make sure everything's running smoothly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So let's go, let's go back, Zach. You know what what brought you into supplements? Were you an athlete? Were you just the typical guy that just everyone else is using supplements? I'm in the gym. I mean, walk me through Zach as a teenager. So go way back here. Um, when I was in high school, I was graduated 135 pounds. Um, I was bullied. Okay. I was the small kid. Um, I just kind of was sick of get, being the small guy. Um, started working out heavily around, I want to say 17, 18. Um, started right. getting into the gym, learning it. By the way, it was not easy for me uh, being, you know, the small guy working out with these these big dudes. It was uh, very intimidating. So um, started working out, started to build that interest in, in the supplement industry and uh, just in the, in the fitness industry all around, uh, but never saw myself working in it. Just more, I was kind of a part of the community. Sure. You know, I'm one of the oddballs uh, in this industry. A lot of these guys, you know, worked at uh, GNCs, worked at vitamin shops, owned their own um, store, worked, they, they, you know, worked for companies. Most guys in this industry I've talked to have worked in the industry before starting their own business. Yeah. My past is a little bit different though. So I've always been in sales. So I worked Thanks. at cell phone sales, um, AT&T and Sprint worked there for uh, quite some time. I did uh, Sam's club. It was uh, selling credit cards. If you guys are a part of Sam's club and you have oh, a guy asking you to sign up for a I, I was one of those guys, unfortunately. <laughs> um, what else did I do? I did life insurance sales, which probably was the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, that was Imagine. two years of door knocking and random places I was not comfortable in. Uh, but you know, that job, because of that, I'm, I'm who I am today. Um, yep. I did that for a little bit. I sold... Uh, telecommunications to business to business. So wow. I've got a little bit of experience doing business to business. Um, uh, plumbing stuff, it's still sales. Um, I, you know, technically selling jobs, um, getting commission on that. So that's sales as well. But I worked in a lot of different sales jobs. But my okay. biggest problem is working with all these companies is I never truly believed in the product. I always mm. felt like a scumbag with what I was selling. Okay. You know, insurance. Uh, I've almost lost sleep at night with some of that. It was, uh, it's, um, it's, it's just I didn't really believe in the product. Um, yeah. You know, I didn't believe in the agendas either. You know, anyone who's worked with corporate knows there is a corporate agenda that's pushed down, and whether you like it or not, that's your job to push it. Um, that was kind of in the, the cell phone industry. So 
throughout my years of sales, I just saw all the the negatives in sure in all these companies, and it, it just it really started to piss me off. Uh, and I wanted to find a way to to get away from that, start my own thing. So I was kind of on the path to getting into my own business and, and figuring out something. I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, and it was one of these podcasts, I think it was Andy Frisella, where he was okay. saying, find something you're passionate about and make a business about it. Mm-hmm. So that leads us to fitness. I uh, started getting into fitness. Uh, I was on pace to become a personal trainer and okay. was training some people under the table, um, just getting started, getting on my feet. And very quickly, I realized, wow, there's only one of me. And it limits how many people I can reach. Sure. So started getting into the supplements. Uh, I met a guy who, long story short, manufactures. So let's say you as a consumer want a pre-workout and you want to customize it. Well, it was a really cool idea on his website. He has a form. You fill it out. It asks questions. You know, what's your caffeine tolerance? Do you like the tingles? Um, all the questions and you'd answer it and he would give you a custom formula, you know, completely custom just for you. You get to name it, choose the design. Great idea. Uh, what I approached him with is like, Hey man, I have a perfect idea. Formulated this pre-workout. This is what I think would sell really well. And it's just a, it's a really good pre-workout formula. What if I buy a mass quantity from you? and basically start my own business and run it from there and uh we kind of started a partnership from there okay um you should have seen the setup it was a basement setup it was clean though i said i say basement setup definitely not fda regulated you know it's um cringing some people are cringing right now zach watching this but anyway they are they are but you know you got to start somewhere yep we we made mistakes we learned but this was it was a small select few uh, friends, family. Um, it was uh, a very good operation for a basement operation. Okay. Very good operation. Um, had some obstacles there we had to overcome. Flavoring companies. Flavoring companies do not work with small brands, especially yeah. when you're the one manufacturing it. So we actually had to get sample runs from these flavor companies and oh, make wow. the supplements from these sample runs. And by the way, it tasted amazing. Like okay. for a it, it was a solid pre-workout, but we were running into some problems with uh, keeping up with the demand. Um, and also, I just always had this feeling, I, I take a lot of uh, priority in, in quality, and mm-hmm. I just felt like the quality could be better. I mean, we're making it in a basement, so how, how can we improve this? I got in touch with a manufacturer down in Florida, and we, yeah, that, that's the other thing. Not a lot of people know in this industry. You know, we're not talking 500 bucks to put an order in. We're talking 15, yeah. 20, $30,000. I didn't have that back then. So, you know, it, it was, uh, it was the only way we could start. We got to a point where I did have that money. So we started with a manufacturer. We rolled out, um, a couple products with them, redid the label, uh, the label actually funny enough. I saw before, your post the other day yesterday. I saw your post of, I think it was white, saw, white, a white label. Yeah. We had this one for, this was before, this was the basement operation. Okay. But we move on to the next guys, um, had a couple successful runs with them. And on the third run, they fucked our, they fucked us bad. Uh, they sent us product that was flavored wrong. And I refused to sell it because it, it, it was not good. It had like a chemical taste yeah. in it. Um, okay. I do a quality check on all my products when I get them. And yep. it, it didn't, it didn't, I, I wasn't happy with it. So I was like, guys, you, you right. fucked this up. Like I'm not, I'm not paying for this order. So um, they, did they ended up. You? Did they refund they did you? Or refund like, no, me. Buddy. Okay. They, they did refund me. We did another batch with them and they sent me it. And then with this batch, it within two months hardened up. They didn't seal it properly okay. on the seal. Uh, they didn't put in the, mm. the heater long enough, so it, it okay. never sealed properly. And within two months, it hardened up. Uh, I didn't realize this till three months in, so we had a bunch of product go out that uh, I didn't know was, was rock hard. And yep. um, 
you know, this is when we were starting to work with retail stores. Uh, so what second I found out that our product was going bad and having issues, I pulled it the fuck off the shelves. Yeah. Um, made everything right with those guys. And uh, I had to eat about $50,000. Um, still sitting in the storage locker. Um, refused to sell it. Um, those guys wouldn't Jeez. make that one right because they already had a, another issue. But uh, regardless, yeah. we ate that got in touch with uh, a really cool guy in the industry also owns a brand um also okay. does manufacturing um chad i don't know if you know chad uh no. brooks big big shout out to him that dude yeah i wouldn't be where i am today if it wasn't for him but hooked me up with tk from Nutrimedia. oh yeah got me in touch TK. with a really nice manufacturer um in carolina and okay everything just started to take off from there. So, I mean, you've seen the new labels, the new forms. Uh, we first rolled out Pumped. Yep. Which turned out really nice. And then we rolled out the high stem again to get fucked. So, yep. we uh, we actually were without get fucked for a while just because I, I had no money. So, I had to roll out Pump, uh, recoup my, my loss. And then when we had the finances, then we rolled out get fucked. So I want to talk to you a little bit about Get Pumped, okay? Well, and we'll go to Get Fucked there in a minute. But Get Pumped, for people that are listening, okay, you always got two sides of the coin. You've got stimulants and non-stim. But you went right in the divide by throwing in 80, 85 milligrams, correct? 85, 85 milligrams of caffeine, which is basically yep. a cup of coffee. So what what made you kind of go a little bit off the cuff? Because it's not, it's not really stimmed, but it's not stim-free. We did a lot of R&D. And we found that people who go with the low stem don't necessarily mind the caffeine. They just yep. don't want to get fucking obliterated with 300 milligrams of caffeine. Um, it's really hard to find a pre-workout that, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost non-existent to find a pre-workout that's somewhere between zero and a hundred milligrams of caffeine. Exactly. So, exactly. And it's, it's a nice little sweet spot. 85 milligrams yep. is just enough where it kicks in. It doesn't interfere with, any blood flow, so you're still going to get a great pump. Um, doesn't yeah. interfere with sleep. You can take it at night, go get your workout, get home, go to bed, no problems. Um, yeah, it just we, we played around. The first uh, release of pump was actually 125 milligrams, and we lowered it just even a little bit more. Um, 85 um, on all of our R and D was it was the sweet spot. Because I love it. I'm, you know, I'm very stim sensitive. I should say stim sensitive, but I don't use a lot of caffeine. Okay, because I'm not a tweaker or anything. And this is great because uh, generally during the week I'm four, four thirty. I'm working out, and this is perfect. Because like you said, it gives me gives me that lift from the energy, everything else. But then I'm still able to hit the pillow at ten o'clock and really not have any issues. Because before that, I mean, after three o'clock, I'm all stim free. So this is like that little extra jolt that you need. Like you said, still get the vasodilation. A little bit of energy, and then just well rounded with all the other ingredient, all the other ingredients. Exactly, it's um, it's just the perfect amount of caffeine. It's um, pumped is something I obviously get fucked as my baby. Like that, that's what I'm I'm happiest with. Uh, just because I, I I think it's fun, man. Um, but pumped it really turned out to be honestly, it's one of our best sellers. Um, just because there's it's it's a nice little niche. Um, yep. No one no one does that, man. Put you on the spot. Both flavors are really good. Which one's selling better? If someone is listening and said, oh, I want to buy it, but I only want to pick one at the moment. My personal favorite is Cherry Taffy. I will tell okay. you, though, it, it is split right down the middle. It, yep. Every time I think one flavor starts to take the lead, it, it just balances out. Um, yep. it, uh, the Cherry Taffy is really unique, and this is why I like it. The Taffy... Uh, if you guys ever try your pre-workout and you get a little bit of that chalky or gritty or nasty taste, uh, when you have a, a high dose pre-workout, you're going to get that. Uh, there's really no way around that. Uh, what mm -hmm. we did is we went with the cherry taffy because it really dilutes that chalkiness. Well, it, mm -hmm. it's because, you know, if you have a Laffy Taffy or uh, an airhead, it's kind of almost got that, not chalky, but it's got that little like kind of bite after it. So the cherry taffy yep. just it's, it's it tastes like a cherry taffy. It's it's really good. Yeah, it's it's definitely unique, and that's what that's what I like. It's always a gamble, you know, with with companies. I, I bring this up a lot of my podcasts. Is it is it you're coming out with flavors? Do you play it safe? 
you know, or do you go a little bit left field, you know, like, like you did the chat, the, the, the cherry tab, the, the Laffy Taffy type of flavor. Do you go like the mangoes, the peaches, or again, do you play it safe? And I enjoy the fact that people are taking risks now. The more companies are going a little bit outside the box where years ago it was always fruit punch and blue raz. Those are the two most popular flavors. And I don't think anybody makes a fruit punch nowadays, which is great. No. Yeah. It's, it's cool to see what a, all these companies have done with the flavor. I mean, you're spot on. It's, it's, it's cool to see what, what my competition's doing with it. Um, a lot of crazy ones out there nowadays. And then let's talk about the obvious here, the get fucked. Cause I know we, sp- I think you and I talked about this. I mean, was this the name right off the bat? Mom and dad didn't yell at you. You didn't get any flack saying, dude, on, on, a, on, a, on a pre-workout here or what? Uh, listen, man. I mean, in this industry, you know, you got companies, you got DBAP from Axe and Sledge. Don't be a pussy. You got people don't know uh, what that is, though, dude. It's not it's not out there in all full acronym. You know, there's and then, and then, and then, I was gonna yeah, then I think the, like the big the before this you have cracked or there was crack back in the day, but there's never been this not, something as risky as this. Not risky in a negative, but just risky in a title. It's people who know me, it's kind of my personality, just out there, uh, different. Yep. Um, it, it works well. Uh, we did get a little bit of kickback, just just a little bit, enough, which I did expect. Okay. Um, but overall, the, the positive feedback we get on it um, definitely outweighs any negatives. Um, we've only ever offended one person to date that I know of. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a win. Um, my biggest fear was getting into wholesale stores with the name Get Fucked. But all yeah. my wholesale guys love it. Um, they, I go down, um, set up uh, events with a store I do business down in Morgantown with, and okay. it's funny. I have all the uh, all the guys down there. They just keep saying "get fucked." You know, they, they think it's fun. Um, it catches your attention. It's different. People love yep. it. But are you are you kind of limiting yourself a little bit from like the GNCs, the vitamin shops? Have you ever tried that and have just be honest been turned down because of the name because of they're more PC type stores? We're in the process right now of working to try. I, I don't want to go GNC corporate, but we'd like the the, the ability to work with franchise directly. Love it. And okay. um, hasn't been turned down yet. Everyone I've been talking okay. to, it seems like we're on the, the right road. Um, and, and you know what, Sean, you might be right. I might be limiting myself in a, in a way, but I mean, it's it's the it's the brand, man. You know, we're we're bringing together a group of people that stand yep. by this stuff uh, and. Yeah, that's that's our niche. So, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice a couple couple stores here and there or a couple people here and there to build a group of people that, you know, aren't going to get offended easily. Um, you know, can have a good laugh, have a little bit of a sense of humor and and yep. um it actually the, the positives outweigh the negatives. You know, and for me, I might be completely left field with this, but I think the smaller brands like yourself will be displayed better in the smaller mob and pops where there's there's you with let's just say there's half a dozen of get fucked and then you have another smaller brand that might be another half a dozen versus you're in a gnc where they might have three and you're overshadowed by bpi's new one mr or something else where there's 24 of them i might be wrong but i think sometimes the smaller brands they speak louder in the smaller stores yeah i i would agree with you uh completely Um, also it's nice working with this uh brick and mortar mom and pop uh, shops, yep. you know, I can build a relationship with these guys. Um, don't have to deal with the corporate aspect. Um, made some cool connections throughout the years talking to these guys. Um, a lot of friendships, and I'd much rather work with a mom and pop shop. Have someone I can call, say what's up, um, handle everything between us. It's um, I love working with the mom and pops. Yep. So, so was it was it always get fucked, or was it something else before you actually landed on this? On the name, always get it? fucked. Yeah, always get fucked. Always get fucked and get pumped. So now to do this, with your ne- if you come up with another pre-workout, I'm a big Succession person. I don't know if you watch the show Succession. Um, the next one could be called Fuck Off. That was the, that was the main like called... term in Succession. That was uh, Fuck Off. We were we were kind of saving for our sleep aid here. You know, so, something okay. along that. Um, we were this. This might be a little. Uh, I don't know if this is cool with the show, but. 
you know, we were thinking of going with like an all out pre-workout, extreme pre-workout. We were going to call it get fucked raw. Uh, but I don't know how that would work out. <laughs> that might be some more you might offend more people but uh, you know I, I love i you know i love people that say they're, they're offended okay you're offended you went to bed did you wake up in the morning did anything change in your life no so so yeah. how are you offended um exactly here, just to read just to read off so all obviously all well dosed you know you've got pure l citrulline which is great you don't have any malate in here and again there's so much studies citrulline citrulline malate i'm more of a purist i like to see the pure citrulline um beta alanine four grams betaine um caffeine hydrous 350 you know it's just well and you got kicked out caffeine malate at one at 150 50 sorry but again just very well very well dosed um again as i said earlier i'm very stim sensitive but this isn't it's kind of polar i'm gonna be honest with you completely behind the curtains here with a name like this i was expecting it to really punch me in the face and kind of slap me hard but it didn't it was very very smooth and i don't know if that was your intention or, but I'm just sharing like what I experienced from this. And Lucas said the same thing, that it's very smooth for the amount of caffeine. You, you are right. You, um, that's, that is what I was going for. Um, you know, like a nice smooth fuck. You know, not, every, not everyone wants a hard fuck. You got to have a and nice... Hard and and <laughs> <laughs> but no, my, my biggest goal, I've taken a lot of high stim pre-workouts. And yep. um, I like them, but like in the moment. But... Afterwards, I feel like absolute shit. You know, you have the come down. You, you know, some of them make you all jittery and shaky to the point where you can't even focus on your workout. Um, yeah. And you know, they use all these crazy ingredients and, you know, kind of getting away from just what we know works. So I stayed with a very simple formula, um, but used all the ingredients to, to really work to well together and, and, you know, when you take it and you can vouch for this, you don't have a crash. It's a nice, no. subtle come down. Um, you get a nice kick of energy, but it's not it's not overkill. You know, a lot of people uh, don't really like that. You notice these extreme stim pre-workouts. It's usually like a one time buy. People are yeah. stocking up on these. Um, it's. You, know, you have your daily drivers and then get fucked. I'd say is just slightly above your daily driver. It's, it is yep. a harder hitting one, but it's not overkill. Exactly. Exactly. So Zach, putting you on a spot here. Do you feel the way, I mean, obviously you, you follow the industry. Do you feel the pre-market, I'm sorry, the pre-workout market is almost plateaued a little bit. There's been weird waves in the pre-workout market and, okay. um, yeah, because you notice for a while it was just we were getting into the just the same old shit. Every pre workout had the same stuff. There was really nothing special about it. And then companies started going with a higher dose pre workout. You know, properly dosing some stuff. A yeah. lot of the small guys came out with like really well done pre workouts. And then there's a little phase where it went out of control, and I, I think we're starting to come out of that where companies are just putting way too much in a pre-workout you have these yeah. massive fucking scoops you know you don't need you don't need this much of this ingredients it's just it just looks good on the label um kind of saw that um i don't think pre-workouts going anywhere there definitely will be some changes in the market yep um we've had i'd really like to see some more with with rtds or like legitimate RTDs. Sure. There's a lot of companies out there that actually have a really solid pre-workout RTD. Um, something that kind of disappoints me is, is a lot of these energy drinks that people use as a pre-workout and they're not really yeah. getting the same benefits. And, and that was a little bit of an obstacle for us when RTDs were, were getting big just because people, you know, at the gym want to grab what's most convenient. So they mm -hmm. pick up something off the shelf, they drink it, and then go work out. And, you know, we had some kickback on that and just, just try it. Here's a sample. Give this yep. a try. Let me know how it stacks up. And once they tried it and noticed the difference in their workout, that's, that's kind of the, the road they went. Um, I know gummies, people messed around with gummies for a little bit. I just don't see the gummy market doing much. Yeah. Uh, and that just took a big I, hit with, with price plow and, and, uh, 
and Amazon, not the pre-workouts, yeah. but a lot of the creatine gummies and everything, you know, stating five grams and they've got, you know, point, point 0.5 in it. Yeah. Um, it, you know, right now to get a proper dose of these ingredients, the best way is a powder and yep. there's not really a, a better way right now. So, uh, I'm sure there'll be some changes, but, um, right now it's, it's doing well. Um, I back, I back the product and, um, we're going to kind of stay in that niche. Um, definitely, uh, as a business owner, as a brand owner, you have to be aware of what's going on in the market. Um, yep. but it's, uh, yeah, right now, this is seems to be the best best way to go. We before before the brand hit when you were growing up, were there brands that you frequently used? I know you're a lot younger than I am, so I've been throwing names out, but they're probably before your time. What were you using back in the day yourself? My first pre workout I ever took was everyone's every. I bet you you could guess it. I, I guarantee you could guess it. I mean, I'm either gonna say. Uh, Mesomorph or the other one, Oxy. Ah, crap. I don't, obviously those two, but no, that's probably dating myself it was a little C4. bit more. It was, it was yeah, uh, okay. the C4 right. Blue Raz. It's the first time I ever took pre workout. Um, okay. I took Mesomorph a little bit. I like that. Um, yep. BPI. Um, I think it was yeah, one. one. Yeah. Yeah. I one took that. Um, I took that quite a bit. Um, and then I locked in on. Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I, I really like that. And that's kind of what, what kind of got the, the juices flowing. Cause I think right. they did their, their original formula that I was taking. They did a fantastic job with their low stem and, and the high stem. Um, it may have been a non stem. I, I forget if it had caffeine or not, but um, yeah, no, you're right. There was, there was one that was the high stem that I think there was some gray stuff in it though, as well. I think, Hyde mm -hmm. was the was the was the gray stuff stem, and I think Jekyll was the non stem. I might mm -hmm. be wrong. I might be confusing them. Yeah, it's it's been a while, but um, that's I think they did a good job back then, and and that's kind of what my idea was with a high stem and a low stem, and and selling them together, um, having both of those on on the arsenal, and then um, took a good bit of bucked up. Um, I I like bucked up a oh, lot. Geez. Um, yeah, I, so, um, that's um. Uh, Protein, I, I really had no preference on protein, just whatever okay. tasted the best. Um, I I have this bad habit where if I if I take something too much, like I I will never drink chocolate protein again. Never. I can't I can't stomach really? it. I just okay. I, I overdid it. I I'm can't do chocolate, I can't do peanut butter protein. I I will I, I can't I can't drink it. Even with all the different flavors of chocolate, you still don't want to test it? Can't no, I've tried it. I've tried uh time after time after time. I cannot okay. stomach it. Um wow, okay. Interesting. I, I want to say um optimum. I want to say that was my protein go to. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that was the staple for everybody back in the day because they were the yeah. that diamond ties with the two liters. Yep. Um, but yeah, pre-workouts always been kind of my the thing that fascinated me. I always liked yeah. the pre-workout. So um, I, I'm an early morning guy. I wake up right. at 3.30 to go to the gym. Um, wow. I am not an early morning person. So it, it's a real struggle for me to get up and go to the gym at that time. Okay. So that's probably where the pre-workout um, pre came from. It's just, you know, I, I've invested a lot in pre-workout through the years. And it's like, well, hey, I think I can do it better. I think I can put something out in the market that's going to do real well. And um, that's, that's where we, uh, we landed. So let's be honest here with, with get fucked. Are you a one scoop person or are you above that one scoop? I've double scooped it. And I, I, it's just, so what is fun though, I think it's better is a scoop of get fucked and a scoop of get pumped. Okay. They stack really nicely and you're not overdoing it on any of the ingredients. Um, it, it's quite a bit of citrulline, um, probably a little more than you need, but um, scooping them together. It is a, yeah. a really nice mix of uh, pump and stem. Right. Um, get a really good workout on that. But I, I've i been taking my pre-workouts for quite some time now, and I still will only do one scoop. Um, I don't find okay. it needed to take two. I'll have to try that this weekend because I you go know, weekends I work out early, so I'll have to do that. I don't know if I'll go one and one. I might go uh, one scoop, but it will get fucked and maybe half a scoup. Because I think the citrulline on me, just to be transparent, might be a little tough on my stomach. Um, but yeah. I think together, probably a good good match together. 
But uh, wait, was there beta alanine in both of these? Did it tingle the there heck is. out of each other? Did yeah. it tingle the hell out of yourself? Get a nice little tingle. Oh my god! So, so Zach, when you were when you were building the brand, did you have a demographic in mind, or was it really just, hey, I'm going to try to hit cast the net and see what kind of bites? Yeah, um, definitely uh, younger, like eighteen, d definitely eighteen and up. Um, our demographic we've we've hit is eighteen to thirty five. Yep. Um, as our demographic, but starting out, um, never owned a business, um, had no idea how to do any marketing, nothing. So, um, to be honest, uh, when I started, I had no fucking clue who I was aiming for. I just yep. wanted to make a product. Um, uh, I liked and kind of gather people and get it, get it out to people who also like that kind of product. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what kind of what's you, you, I don't know if you're kidding about sleep aid or not, but is there anything else in R and D anything else you're dropping soon or other flavors? Or kind some of what, new what's the next? flavors. Okay. And the flavors is going to be, uh, like I said, we found our niche on the pre-workout, but we're yep. going to stick with the pre and that's, that's really what we're going to build our foundation on. So okay. um, I'm not going to become one of the companies that has, you know, 14 different flavors of each pre-workout, but I'm going to have a nice select, uh, you know, nice selection of flavors to choose yep. from. Um, we have some in the works. Uh, actually I actually have a couple samples right here. We have, I'll, I'll show one off. That's, that's all you get. We got uh, oh, sure, a strawberry, wow. straw, strawberry mango. Okay. Um, grape was another one we tried. And um, I will tell you, both are fantastic. And uh, one of those we will be launching um, in the near future. It's funny you mentioned grape because for as long as flavoring has been around, nobody's wanted to touch grape. And all of a sudden it's kind of growing a little bit over the last year, year and a half. And I just find it amazing that no one's touched it, maybe because the flavor houses couldn't do it. Um, but I've had, so I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of put it out there. I, I'm using Muscle Tech's BCAA. Okay. They have a grape formula or e, it's an EAA. It's a grape formula and it tastes like a bubblicious hubba bubba. I mean, it's spot on. Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting again that nobody's ever done grape before until like recently. I, I don't get a couple more companies. Know why? I mean, grape is it's always been a personal favorite of mine. Um, yeah, that's uh, grape. Grape is a good one. So, do you are you gonna are you gonna tweak the formulas or are you gonna keep them as is and just as you said roll out more flavors? We are gonna do one little tweak to get fucked. Um, okay, one little tweak, um, nothing drastic, but. Um, just to improve it a little bit. Um, okay. when, when I make a change, I'm never going to take ingredients out or lower the formula. I'm always going to do something to increase it. Uh, like when we, so here, here's a perfect example. So this is our original tub of get yep. fucked or pumped. Forgive me. This is pumped. This was not our original. This was our, this was our third rollout. We have in this 18.89 grams of ingredients per scoop there's 22 servings per container okay i have six grams of l-citrulline um i have let's see 2.5 grams of beta alanine uh glycerol we only did two grams of glycerol um some other random ingredients in there um, yep. but yeah as you know i mean look at the tub size we so this one was 416 grams for the net weight. This one is 663 grams for the net weight. And we sell this for the exact same amount we sold this for. So my goal has always been to give my customers the best bang for their buck. I want to provide the most value. And I think you said the original was set like 17 and a half and the new one's 26 and a half. So you've gone up substantially, mm -hmm. um, obviously the serving size of the quality of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so like, so besides that, what's, what's next to you? When would you do the Arnold again? Are you plan on doing the Arnold again next year? Was oh yeah. We already, you know, already told Shane we're ready to go for the next year. Um, he reached out to everyone and, uh, we will be setting up, we might even have a bigger booth. Um, but okay. yeah, I, I will, I will go to the Arnold every year moving forward. That was the most fun I've ever had. We able to get away from that. We able to get away from the booth and walk around it all though. Not as much as I, as I would have liked. Um, yeah, it's uh, that's one thing I'd like to kind of walk around more and and see what everyone else is doing, see what's going on, shake some hands. Um, yep. That's one thing I will do a little different next year. Now that I know I have a, a good team that can help manage the booth, 
Um, yeah. I know that I can comfortably walk away and, you know, go check out what's going on. Yeah, because I'm sure you heard it too. Like the, the cage is something you have to go over and see. Because uh, we want to talk about, you mentioned energy. Like go to the cage and you can like feel like the crowd, like off your chest. Yep. The energy in there was just, just fucking batty. Yeah. Yeah, so, there's no feeling quite like that. You know, and, and the other thing too, Zach, that I have to give you is you mentioned going to, I guess, pop-ups and, and all sorts. Of, I call them pop-ups where you do, do uh, demos and whatnot. I find this so interesting that a lot of people open up supplement companies, okay? And I don't want to bash, but a lot of people think, oh, I've got 4,000 followers. You know, I can invest the money and I'm going to just do a post. Everyone's going to come to me. And they just wait for all the sales to come. But they don't realize, look, yes, you have to go out, shake hands, set up tables, go to the gyms, free samples. And I just don't get it. So I applaud you because it might be one out of every five people that have the mentality to go do the gyms, the pop-ups. So kudos to you, brother. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot. That's um, one of my favorite parts of this industry and, and, and you know, owning Zim Fit is, and there, there is no greater feeling going out there, shaking hands with people, making connections and talking about something you're passionate about. Um, it's, you know, I try to do um, one to two uh, a week, go yeah. out, shake hands. Um, a lot of my wholesale uh, guys that I work with, um, next month, we're working with a lot of them. Um, we'll be out at Supzilla in Columbus. Uh, we'll be doing an event with them later in okay. June. Um, I have an event with um, House of Gains out in Lancaster, PA. I'm going to be yeah, out there June 15th. Something. I think he just posted something about it. That he's, he's looking yeah. for vendors and stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a good shop. I understand. Yeah. Uh, I, like, I like Matt, too. Matt, Matt uh, had a couple conversations with him. Um, yeah. looking forward. We're, we're actually not in that store yet. Um, so oh, going out there, setting up and, uh, he's going to bring us in, uh, get some product on the shelves. And, uh, that, that's kind of what I'm figuring out now is just, you know, I'm not really worried about getting my product in these guys stores, just more making the connections, building the relationships. Um, yeah. you meet a lot of cool people in this industry. Um, you know, some of them are competition too. You know, I've met people that are doing the same exact thing I am. And, sure. uh, it's um there's a guy named uh Caleb uh for uh, Viking Mentality. I've had a okay. couple of really good conversations with him, you know, and he's he's doing the same thing. He does pre-workout. Um technically he's competition, but you know, you get to a point where you realize, you know, we're all in this this grind together. We're all we're all here together and there yep. is there's enough to go around, you know, we don't need to be greedy and 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 try to cut each other's throats, you know, everyone, you know, not everyone's going to want to buy get fucked. Yep. It, it, it is what it is. Not everyone wants to buy, get fucked. As much as I love this formula, not everyone's going to love this formula. But, you know, there's there's a nice little group out there that loves this formula, loves the branding, and that's their go-to pre. So, and, and that's another thing I'm kind of learning is not pleasing everyone. You know, you got to find it. who your people are, and that's that's uh, that's who you stick with. And that's how that's how the industry's evolved. Let's say over the last ten years, where it was it was really cutthroat. It's still cutthroat now, but you see more cross brand collaborations. You see more like there's less backstabbing. It still goes on, but there's less backstabbing now. Like there's more there's collaborations or just honesty between brands, which which I can yeah. truly appreciate. That's how I've seen like a lot of evolution over the last ten years. Yeah, I, I love it. It's uh it's cool to see. Um, you know, you you think everyone would be trying to backstab each other but in this industry uh the people i surround myself with are amazing people fantastic yep. people you know it's i had a call with um another supplement brand owner he actually reached out to me and he there was a couple questions i had a couple things i didn't know how to approach and he helped me he uh he gave me all of the the details and it solved my problem you know that that's competition you yep. know but he was more than happy to come and help me out but see, they get back. You got a lot of people that are now realizing, look, the supplement industry is whatever, 20 billion or whatever it is up to nowadays. There's enough to go around. Yes, you want a lot of business, but there's enough to go around where everybody can have a nice piece of the sliver or a piece of the pie. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, you nailed it. We, uh, so kind of a no-brainer. Was ZimFit kind of a no-brainer? Or was there other names you were thinking about? Um, oh, ZimFit was, we actually are legally Zim Fitness. Um, we okay. started with, with Zim Fitness. Uh, hold on. 
I got the proof. You're Maybe. like all about the bottles and everything all around you, whatever you're about to bring down. Yeah. Zim Fitness. That okay. was the original logo. Um, I actually created this. We nice. ran with that for two years, two and a half years. Um, okay. And then TK did the rebranding, which yep. Zim Fit, which just really cleaned it up nice. Um, it makes sense. Uh, with I'm all about, I just want things to make sense, be simple. So like we are Zim Fit USA for everything. Zim okay. Fit USA on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Google, uh, my website, ZimFitUSA.com. So the yep. Zim Fit just, it just made sense. You know, and you mentioned TK too. I've known TK for for a couple of years now. Just another, you're surrounding yourself with like all the good people. I mean, honestly, like we know a lot of the same people and just keep doing what you're doing, brother. Again, like Shane and the TKs that. of the world. And I mean, these are the guys to follow. And Shane, you can't get better. You can't get any better than Shane. Yeah, that's um, my first run with the uh, manufacturer that that um, I had to eat a lot of money on. That was the bad group of people. I got introduced yep. to him by someone who um, you know, is, is falsifying the pre-workout label, putting stuff on there that, you know, they, it's, it's, I won't get into it, but yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't know that I was, I was kind of newer in the industry. So I followed his guidance and it, I got fucked. I, I got fucked, <laughs> um, but learned my lesson, um, figured out really what I want to prioritize, which is quality. And yep. um, that's, uh, led me in the right direction. I, I will not fucking sacrifice quality to make a dollar. I just won't do it. Um, yeah, these, smart. these guys that back me and support me, you know, I, I care a lot about them too. And I would never put a shitty product out there as something that I wouldn't personally take. So that's, yeah. you know, that's something I will never, never compromise. Awesome. Zach, it's been a great conversation. I know you, you shared all your Instagram website and everything else. Besides new flavors, anything else we haven't covered about the brand or anything else as we wind down? That's uh, that's all I got. Flavors, uh, you know, we got some other stuff in the works, um, in the talks, but um, right now we are going to focus on what's what's doing best, and it's it's the get fucked and get pumped. Roll with that, and um, as we grow, we'll keep launching new and great stuff. Awesome. I love it. Again, Zach, it's truly been a pleasure. You know, hopefully it won't be another year before you and I connect again. But uh, as always, I know this is long overdue, but I appreciate you, my friend. Oh, I appreciate your time as well, man. This was fun. That's uh, Let's do it again. Definitely. And everybody listening and watching, thank you so much. Make sure you follow the brand. Follow Zach. Any questions whatsoever? He's very engaging on Instagram. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great night.